Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. For this episode we are going to look uh, on another faction and this time it's Sturgia. We are going to look on the origins of this faction and what culture they are based on. We are going to look on some strengths and some weaknesses. We are going through their units and we are going to look on some campaign benefits and also some disadvantages by playing this faction. So we are going to start at, well, just gonna look a bit at their culture uh, that they are based on. We will not go very deeply into this, but we will look at some um, things. Sturgia is based on the medieval kingdom Kievan Rus, and we know this first of all because of the noble units which Sturgia have, which is called the Druznik. And the Kievan Rus had uh, the closest men to the chieftain had someone called the Drushina, and they was their bodyguards. And in this game, the Sturgeons have the best bodyguards or noble units is the Drushnik. So they have adopted that name and made those bodyguards the bodyguards for this game as well. And the Vikings from the north was actually one of them that established this kingdom. And we have seen some evidence that uh, I'm gonna show you here. The Viking helmet, one of the, well, th there's not many Viking helmets that they have actually managed to find but one of them they found which looked like this and they found that in Norway actually and that was in a Viking grave so we know that uh, the Vikings was in the Kievan Rus fighting as mercenaries and soldiers and we have found this helmet so I, I think they, there's not that evidence that they looked that way everyone but since this is the only Viking helmet I have found. I think the uh, game developers just assume that, yeah, the helmets for the uh, Sturgeons can look like this. So we also have some other things to back this theory up and the socks or the sacks is a Viking weapon actually. It was a short uh, sword or a long dagger that they had in their belt if there was to drop their sword or axe in battle they could just pick up this from the belt and use it as a piercing weapon it was actually very good to have if you was going to close combat too because the um the vikings was known to be fighting with long axes and heavy swords so this was a, a bit more lighter weapon and uh, could be used in close combat we also have the round shield which was uh, a Viking um, equipment, if you're gonna call it that, but also a good weapon to bash against enemies and make decent or good shield walls. We also have an armor that um, the uh, Sturgeons are using, and this was a um, armor that the Kievan Rus was known to be using. The coat, coat of plates is this called, but it, it was a chain armor, which was... Uh, some uh, square metal pieces that was sewed onto their shirts or the mail armor to, to well, it worked as decent armor. And we also have some weapons uh, that uh, the Sturgeons are using that is known to be used by Vikings and the, that's the two-handed battle axe. Uh, there's not the well, I'm not sure if the battle axe from the Norse Vikings, I think that was actually a bit longer and that was called the Dane axe, but this is not the Dane axe, so maybe um, maybe it's not based on the Norse Vikings, but the Kievan Rus Vikings, and that that what this all melts down to anyways, so this faction is made by the culture from the Kievan Rus, I think. 
So the Sturgeons are led by the Prince of Sturgia, which is called Ragenvard. And his mother, as it says in-game here, is actually uh, tied some bones to the mercenary clan called Skolderbroda. And that's also a thing that backs up the theory that the Kievan Rus uh, is based on... Or, I mean, the Sturgeon is the based on Kievan Rus, because... Skolderbroda is a mercenary clan and they're all vikings so the Sturgia have some control and some strong um, powerful friends in some uh, mercenary viking soldiers. The cultural bonus for the Sturgia is recruiting and upgrading infantry troops are 25% cheaper. That is a very good bonus having early in this game, when you are not very rich, but when it comes late game you will have a, a lot more income and you will not struggle that much by upgrading and recruiting your troops. So that bonus having late game is not that important really. The other one here is more important late game, when you have big armies and armies lose 20% less daily cohesion, that could be good but if you have a lot of influence, you can just expand the time period of that army anyway, so that's not that important really. Uh, the 20% more relationship penalty from kingdom decision could be crucial. And I, th I think that this uh, penalty here is very bad and uh, will drastically change your relations to lesser clans and especially late game when you need that relation to recruit clans I think that could hurt you really much. I know there's a perk that can decrease the penalty loss from kingdom decisions and you probably need to find that and uh, get it uh, if you are going with the sturgeon culture bonus. So when you start your Sturgeon campaign, you own seven cities, or the Sturgeons own seven cities. And they are all up north, and they are pretty well defended actually. Uh, but you are surrounded by tr mainly three factions, and that's the Batanians, the Northern Empire, and the Crusades. And they might attack you, uh, the Batanians from, well, almost the same direction as the Northern Empire. And you can get attacked by the Northern Empire from the east there too. And uh, the Crusades will most definitely attack you from the uh, east. Uh, so Tyal, Omor and Warshag is the most vulnerable Sturgeon cities. And especially Tyal to the east here will be very much contested either by the Northern Empire or the Crusades. So... What you want to do, if you're gonna go with an assault to a kingdom, my recommendation is to go and fight the Crusades actually. Because uh, you can have a very long, uh, well defended kingdom if you can take the the outskirts of the, the bat, uh, well, adventure map. And if you take all the uh, Crusade cities, you have a very good kingdom, in my opinion. You can also go and fight the Northern or the Batanians, but then you will find yourself in the middle of the map and will be attacked on different fronts very quickly. So in my, um, my best tips or strategy advice would be to wait until uh, the Crusades are attacking the Southern or the Northern Empire, and then you attack them too, and take Baltacan to the north, for instance. Then you have a very good advantage. So, um, they also have some good defensively positioning. As you can see here, if you can see the lines I have drew here, um, Warsheg have a very good choking point, and Reveal up to the west is a very good much protected. You have to travel through those choke points and in the middle to Balgard and Varnapol too. It's only one way up there so it's very easy to defend and also if you lose Tyal it's only one way into the middle of the kingdom and there are some choke points um, beneath Tyal there to the south and to the east to the Crusades too. So Sturgia is actually a very 
uh, a faction that have a very good defensive position on the adventure map, in my opinion. The Sturgeons are struggling with the Sea Riders as the bandits, yeah, and they can be very painful. They have that javelins that can really kill you if they hit you in the head, <laughs> and you have to be careful when you're fighting those. But if you can capture them and recruit them into Drushniks uh, with the leadership skill at 150 and the veterans respect perk, that could be a very good uh, supply of units. Uh, the prosperity in the Sturgeon towns is pretty bad, just have to say that. The resources uh, is not much, they don't have much food, uh, they have fish and fur and it seems like that's the only thing they make money on so the prosperity in these towns are pretty bad and you will move pretty slow in the snow um, too so this place is a bit painful to be in so you just have to have that in mind when you are playing the Sturgeons. The Sturgeon units are very heavily armored and some of them are very deadly as well in attacks. Like the Sturgeon Heavy Linebreaker can really kill a unit in one blow. And the Sturgeon Drushnik Champion is a very dangerous cavalry with a heavy armor and that long uh, lance that can be couched and is very good in a charge. The Sturgeon Heavy X-Men is also an excellent infantry unit with throwing weapons and an axe as their main melee weapon. The thing is that the Sturgeon Heavy Spearmen isn't that good because they can't brace their, sp their pole arm and doesn't work very well against cavalry as they should in my opinion. The Sturgeon Horse Raider is a decent cavalry, it's, it's sort of an all-round cavalry that you can use as light cavalry and you can use that as a counter cavalry unit or you can just send them in to the front lines and they can use their lances too. Uh, the Sturgeon Veteran Bowman isn't a very good bowman and I think that is the, the biggest weakness for this army, that's the, uh, the ranged attacks here are just too bad and I also think the Sturgeon Heroic Linebreaker have a bit too weak armor but if it should be better then maybe they are are getting too overpowered so that's a balance they had go gone for the game developers so I feel that it's okay to have that uh, Sturgeon Heroic Linebreaker with a bit lower uh, armor so that it will not be overpowered. I have been ranking all the units for this game and I'm just going to show you a tier list. I ranked the, um, the Sturgeon units like this. So I'm just going to start on the top here which is the Sturgeon Heavy Axemen. I think these guys are almost as good as the Imperial Legionaries and they are very heavy armored and they work very very well in sieges and on the battlefield. They're actually decent against cavalry too. So these units are very good all round units and I think you should have this unit in your army if you if you can. So on the second tier there we have the Sturgeon Drushnik Champion. They are an excellent charging unit and they can take some heavy blows because they have, have so strong and heavy armor so they are very good units and they are noble units only weakness is that it's a bit hard to get them because you will find and recruit noble units which is infantry and then later when they get enough experience you can upgrade them but only when they have been through some battles and then you can upgrade them to these lovely strong cavalry units on the tier 3, a bit more uh, easy to get these cavalry units is the Sturgeon Horse Raider, which is a decent cavalry, I must say. It's not bad and, uh, well, have enough of these and they can really make some kills with their javelins as well, as well as their, their uh, lances. The Sturgeon Heroic Linebreakers have a bit low armor, so you will lose very many of these 
in battles, especially to the enemy archers. They will be shot down very quickly if you can't protect them properly. Pro Properly, I mean, <laughs> so this will be uh, a unit that will die very often, but if you can get them to the enemy front line, you can really mess up the opponent. So protect them well and you will have some heavy hitters for your army. The Sturgeon Veteran Bowman is a very weak and bad archer, which I think you should get another archer for your Sturgeon playthrough, but if you're gonna go with a total clean army, only Sturgeon army, uh, this will be your weakest um, army, um, I mean weakest unit in your army. Uh, they deal not that much damage, they have a bit short range, they are decent in uh, close combat, but that's actually maybe their only strength, that they are a bit better than the other archers in melee combat but well not the, the Fian champions of course but um, the, the main strength for an archer should be ranged attacks and then we have the sturgeon heavy spearman which is a very bad unit and you are given the choice to choose between the sturgeon heavy axemen and the heavy spearmen and I see no point that you should choose the Spearman, which is uh, maybe the same as the Heavy X-Men against Cavalry. Um, they work as good, actually, and as an infantry unit fighting other infantries, these are just horrible uh, compared to the X-Men. It's a big, big difference. So these are pretty bad units at this point. And they don't have the ability to brace, that's why I put them all the way down here at the tier 5. So if you're going to go with the infantry from Sturgia, I will definitely recommend you to go with the Heavy X-Men. To summarize this, we're going to look at some strengths and some weaknesses. And we are going to start with the strengths. So, good Heavy Infantry. The Heavy X-Men is a very, very strong infantry unit and I really recommend you to have that unit in your army and especially if you're fighting and playing as the Sturgeons that is probably almost as good as the Imperial Legionary so the infantry is very very good I think that the strategic positioning from the Sturgeon is pretty good as well on the adventure map, the seven Sturgeon cities are very well protected by that choke points you have to travel through uh, to get to that kingdom. Uh, you have that bonus from the culture bonus that you can recruit cheaper and upgrade units cheaper. It's not crucial, but it's never bad to have cheaper recruits, of course. And almost every unit in this faction have a high armor value. I will say that the heroic linebreaker compared to the other shock troops doesn't have that high armor value, but they have decent armor. And the noble units are excellent as well, but maybe they should be on foot and have a even stronger infantry for this faction. I think the Drushina or the Drushnik can be a good bodyguard having on foot too, so I think that will not be a big loss. Uh, maybe have to change some things around. Make these heavy spearmen a cavalry unit, for instance, instead. I'm not sure, but I think they could uh, really have a infantry noble line unit. I, sh I should that I think that should be a a thing. So let's look at the weaknesses and uh, weak archers. Yeah, they they don't do much damage. Um, the, the archers for the sturgeons and I must say in my opinion this uh, culture bonus is bad late game this will not benefit you much so I think this culture bonus is actually not that good low prosperity in cities and the sturgeons have very bad economics compared to the other factions so they will never grow as fast as the Azerai cities for instance so the trading up here and especially because of the choke points uh, it's 
easy to scare away the uh, the caravans and you can actually block the caravans there too by just putting an army on the choke points and then the prosperity will uh, really decrease and you will not be able to get a rich city and yeah it's a bit hard to get the noble cavalry because you have to be in fights with the infantry and that might die uh, you need that experience before you can upgrade them and well it's a bit hard really they should be on horseback sooner in my opinion or you should just drop the horse uh, and just make them noble infantry units in my opinion so what do you think are the sturgeons worth playing or are they a bit weak at the moment for this version uh, please let me know in the comments and have I said anything that's not right or maybe something about the cultural background that you know more than me, please let me know, it's pretty interesting and I really like history so that's not a problem. And if you disagree with anything I said just let me know too, that's totally fine. And thank you so much for watching this, I will see you in a future episode so take care 